All right, class. So now we're going to model making of sex cells. So by sex cells, I mean, of course, gametes. Now, who can name the two types of sex cells we have? We have good sperm, and the other is good eggs. So now we're going to make some. So today, basically, we're going to practice making some and talking about the chromosomes that are inside them. So today, to represent chromosomes, gummy worms. So we're going to use gummy worms to represent the fact that it's like chromosomes. So now, as we talked about earlier, each human has 23 sets of chromosomes. Remember, that's 46 total, but they're 23 sets. That's because you get 23 from your mom and 23 from your dad. So think of it as you get a, sl a slot one chromosome from mom and a slot one chromosome from dad. So, but now, how do we make these in the first place? Because this is what you have. This is now you. But now how do you make your own sex cells? That's what we're gonna kind of be modeling here. So you can model along with me. If you can at home, gummy worms and napkins are best, but if you can find anything that kind of fits this, I'll give you guys a second right now. Go ahead and pause the video, try to get your materials together. If you wanna do this completely, you need some kind of non-super sharp. I'm using a butter knife. Be very careful. I'm using a knife and a cutting board. Do not cut anything unsupervised. Get your parents' help. Um, gummy gummy bears work too. Other types of foods can work as long as it's got kind of multiple coloration or you can just draw this out. Ideally you want to be able to follow along with me. So let's say these are slot one chromosomes you got from mom and dad. This one is your maternal one you got it from mom. This one is your paternal one you got it from dad. Maternal and paternal. Now these combine to make you. Now each one of these contains the exact same gene, but they have different alleles. Remember, you each, like each parent gave you a gene for hair color, but they might have given you a different one. Remember, you, the, you, each chromosome has the same gene on it, but can have different alleles. So for example, so we're gonna label them, starting at the head of the gummy worm. So we're gonna say that the head of the gummy worm is for hair color. This is the, so mom gave you a green hair color allele. Next one we're gonna say is for eye color. So mom gave you a red eye color allele. And we'll use the tail for the last bit. We'll say it's skin color. Mom gave you red skin color allele. And that's fine. All right, what did dad give you? So dad, so this one is for good hair color. So dad gave you orange hair color allele. He gave you a yellow eye color allele. And he gave you yellow skin color allele. So, and these are in our cell. So the napkin represents cell. It's gonna need to be unfolded several times. Just be ready for that. So we've got, these are all slots. So you, let's say these are your slot one, the first slot, the first pair of chromosomes. And these, are, and these are gonna code for hair color, eye color, and skin color. And so you've got that. But now it's time to make your own sex cells, making your own sperm and egg. First thing that has to happen, the very first step of this process, which we called meiosis, the making of sex cells, is that it needs to get ready to divide. So it has to do a few things to do that. First thing it's going to do is expand. So the cell, it's going to become your sex cells, grows. And the second part of that though is, now we need to make some copies. So remember chromosomes are made of what? Good, DNA. Chromosomes are made of DNA. And we talked about DNA replication before. So this is when it's gonna happen. The DNA is going to replicate itself. All right, so now these chromosomes need to copy themselves. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to copy themselves. You're gonna to start to recognize this picture. Now, each, now this is, these are still two chromosomes. You still have your chromosome you got from mom, your chromosomes you got for dad. They've doubled in, in amount of information, but they're still themselves. They're still connected at the middle by this thing called a centromere. So, the way we're gonna kinda of try to show that to form a little bit of learning surgery. So you want to go kind of right at the middle and you just kind of want to like cut out just a little bit. You're really just trying to expose the sticky bit. So sticky bit, one side, expose the sticky bit on the other side. Okay, and you want to push the sticky bits together and squeeze. Squeeze like, squeeze like me. Don't destroy them, but squeeze like me. And hold there for a little bit. Hopefully the sticky parts stick together and voila. This is probably much more like what chromosomes. So, once again, this is still one chromosome technique because they are connected to the middle by something called a centromere. Because remember, this all started as this one and it just duplicated itself. So it's still the same chromosome. It's still only one chromosome. But it now has two what we call sister chromatids. So this is one chromatid, this is another chromatid, and they're connected at the middle. And since they're copies of each other, we call them sister chromatids. 
Yeah, I've got to do that for the other one real quick. So just leave it. Just got a little piece of his belly. I suppose we'll see if you don't want to tell you too much. Okay, and then squish the meals together. Squish, 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 squish. There we go. Okay, let's get it back. Let's get it back at our cell. All right. There we go. We've done it. So as I said, this is still this is still only two chromosomes at this point. There are two chromatids held together by a centromere, but it's still two chromosomes. So now you've enlarged the cell, you've copied the DNA, so the DNA is ready to be passed on, you've duplicated the DNA. So now it's time for the next step. Now this is the interesting part. This is where a lot of your genetic diversity is gonna come from. Because they're not done yet. Now next step it's gonna happen is they're gonna line up in the center because they're getting ready to divide. Yes, fascinating. Ooh. The world of science. Majestic. So, now they're getting ready. So what they'll do is they'll line up in the middle and it will cause some overlap. So next up, get some overlap going. So the tops are gonna to cross over and the bottoms are gonna cross over. And that's what we call this process. We call this crossing over. It's one of the first steps to recombining your DNA, which is what makes you unique. That's why you don't look like an exact copy of your mom or your dad. There's been a recombination. So remember, this one is carrying the genes for green hair. This one's carrying the gene for orange hair. Makes sense? So these are the same gene. They're different alleles, true, but they are still technically the section of DNA that codes for hair color. They're each the same thing, right? So what could possibly happen here? If two basically the same things are overlapping, they might, good, switch. And that's exactly what crossing over is. Crossing over is a process that happens when the gene sections switch. Because then again, while there are different alleles, they're still the same gene, which means they have basically all the same parts. So if they were to switch places, actually wasn't caused too big a problem. In fact, they kind of want to switch places because they're equally pulled by each side. So now we can get a little Frankenstein on this. So squish the sticky parts together. Squish the sticky parts together. Would this have been more fun in class? Oh well, what happens happens. We're doing it home now. And you're following along. Yeah, no problem. Remember these? these crossover two and these also contain the same genes. These contain the same color genes. So these two are going to cross over as well. Squish together. Squish, 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 squish. There we go. Squish together. This is a very natural process that happens all the time, specifically when your cells are undergoing meiosis. You do not want it to happen during mitosis, but during meiosis, it's not. It's encouraged and enjoyed. And there you have it. So let's look back at our cell. So now, once again, still two chromosomes, but they're not sister chromatids anymore because now they don't have matching genetic information. They have swapped. So now. Crossing over is now complete. Now this next part's a little hard to see when we only have two chromosomes set up, but basically, does this one have to go over here? Or could I do this? Is that an option? Of course it is. It doesn't really matter what side they go on, they can go on either side, that's fine. It doesn't really change much. But it changes everything too. We call this independent disorder. Imagine if I had a row 23 on each side, so all so all 46, so two rows of 23, like this. And I just arrange them randomly. Your body doesn't say like, all right, all the maternal chromosomes on the left, all the paternal chromosomes on the right. It doesn't do that. They just switch randomly. So you might have like three paternal and then one maternal just switch. And that's, again, you're recombining and causing a lot of genetic variation. So we call this independent assortment. So you know what, I don't like it. There we go. I like that better. So this is independent assortment, so now, First step, the cell is going to split in two. So now we have cell, cell division taking place. I'm just gonna tear right along the fold, make my life easy. They've detached. And now they are separating off into their own cell. These ones are going to do it as well. Step right out.
and they're done. Congratulations, those of you following at home. You've now completed meiosis. You have meiosis one and meiosis two. Now, think back to where we started real quick. When we started, how many chromosomes did we have? Right. Each cell had two chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad. How many chromosomes does each cell have now? One, or half as many. So now we started with a cell that had a full number of chromosomes, now we have four cells with half as much material. Why would we want to do that? Remember, what are we making? We are making sex cells. And remember, sex cells, egg and sperm combined, you get half your mom, half your dad combined to make a full amount. So you need to be down to half your genetic information so you can combine it with the other half and other for reproduction. But also take a look at how we started. Remember when we started, we had one that was red, green, red, green, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. That was it, those were the variations. Now, is that all we have now though? No, look at that. All of this started from the same cell, but now instead of only two possibilities, we have four. Now we have yellow, green, red, orange, and red, orange, yellow, green. So, with this combination, with this method for random assortment crossing over from one cell, we have four different possibilities of things you can pass on. And this is why we have so much genetic variation. This is the key to our success. Because we have such wild amounts of variation, we're capable of getting all these different combinations, mutations spring up, we have a much better chance at adapting and evolving. This is why you might look very different. And this is also why you don't look like all your siblings. Think about it, if your mom and dad's DNA combined the same way every time, you guys would all look like copies of each other but you don't, and now you know why. The process here, as I said, it's called meiosis. Meiosis is now complete. You've gone through meiosis one and two. Hopefully you had fun following along at home. Um, your hands are probably a little dirty. I wouldn't suggest eating these gummy worms, but if you have some leftover ones, you could probably eat them now. So, hopefully you've learned a little bit. This is Schechter Biology, meiosis. So now we're going to talk about some possible genetic disorders that can result from an error in meiosis. Or meiosis, the process to make sex cells, gametes. Or in this case, we'll talk about making eggs. So we're at the final step of meiosis, basically known as meiosis two. Basically, they're going to line up, redivide, and turn into four cells. But sometimes mistakes can happen here. What's probably the biggest mistake that's likely to happen in this scenario? Yeah. When they're supposed to separate, they don't. And it can lead to situations like this. So this one, they will separate normally. Everything's fine. In this case, for whatever reason, they do not separate. So now, instead of four cells each with things, you have one cell that's missing that chromosome, and another cell that has an extra copy of it. What's gonna happen now when this Say this egg combines with this sperm. What could happen? Yeah, so when this egg and sperm combine, suddenly you're gonna have three copies of that chromosome. These can lead to what we call genetic disorders. Now, some are very common, some are not. Well, the most common one you probably know about is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is called a trisomy. It basically refers to they have an extra chromosome. That's where the term, that's where, if you ever heard that, that's coming from a situation like this, where they have essentially not attached properly, leading to an extra chromosome, so Down syndrome. Another common place where this happens is called Klinefelter syndrome, and that's when, as you know, um, technically male tends to be XY chromosome, female tends to be XX, so with Klinefelter has XXY. So it's actually fairly common, millions of people have it, you might have it. But essentially, instead of having an XY or an XX, they have XXY, they have three. This, is ha this situation has happened. The X's didn't separate, so they got two X's and a Y. It can happen pretty often, but it's another example of the disorder that occurs from lack of separation during meiosis. This and other genetic disorders like this are all the results of mistakes happening in this process.